Moving along to motor vehicle pursuit deaths, they often take place in a public place, which means they can have an impact on other members of the community who are not directly involved. For example, where a person being pursued by police in a vehicle may lose control of their car and collide with another car or bystanders. They often create a great deal of media and public attention. Throughout the decade 1990 to 1999, the number of motor vehicle pursuit deaths increased gradually, peaking between 2000 and 2002. Over the past six years, the number of such deaths have remained fairly stable. In 2008, there were 11 motor vehicle pursuit deaths. Now since 1990, four out of every five motor vehicle pursuit deaths has involved a person aged under 29 years or younger. But of most concern is the fact that young people aged 15 to 19 years represent 38% of the total number of persons who have died in motor vehicle pursuits. If we look now at a graph, we can see that motor vehicle pursuits, when you, when you run a trend line through them, have been gradually increasing over the last decade or so. Most particularly in 2003 when we saw a spike there's been some positive downturn in the trend. So look, let's have a review of where we've come so far. Overall, deaths in custody have generally decreased since 2000, although there has been a rise in total deaths since 2006. There was a modest increase for prison custody deaths from the previous years, while police custody deaths have decreased slightly. Recent rises in prison custody deaths can be partly attributed to steady increases in the number of natural cause deaths in prison, most, most likely associated with an ageing of the prisoner population. Nevertheless, it should be noted that when comparing these recent rises in total deaths with those in previous years, figures recorded lately are much lower than those recorded in the late 1990s and early part of this decade. It's also positive to note that while prison custody deaths have been trending downward, police custody deaths have been fluctuating, predominantly caused by Category 2 deaths, those in motor vehicle pursuits and sieges. Police custody deaths have ranged from 15 to 32 in the past decade. And this brings me to some conclusions. While Indigenous persons are not more likely to die in custody than non-Indigenous persons, they remain significantly overrepresented in all forms of custody compared to non-Indigenous Australians. Indigenous people comprise less than 2.5% of the total population in Australia, but yet they account for over a quarter of young people in juvenile detention, one third of people involved in police custody incidents, and almost a quarter of the total prison population. And these issues are matters for grave concern. This finding in indicates the need for continued efforts to close the gap in Indigenous disadvantage, particularly with regards to Indigenous contact with the criminal justice system. I thank you for your time.